pop that ward ability and protect him into the Rage Tower area. Also protecting the blimp. The blimp will need to cross all the way through the base here. And it will need to arrive and then secure the Town Hall. This is the hinge point of attack here. This is the most important thing. Their whole season could rely on this blimp taking the Town Hall. Four teams remain in the Suzy Cup. This is the semifinals. This is going to be a best of two. The only teams that remain... On our match today will be Class Champs versus Throw with a successful Skelly Donut right out of the gate here for Picastro. We'll see what he can do from here, but the other two teams that remain are Tribe Gaming and Imperium Titans Exports. So, I mean, it's fitting that the last four teams standing are what I would rank in the top five teams in the world right now. I think the only team that we're missing here out of my currently ranked top five would be Navi, right? Which is crazy. Which is crazy. He did end up activating the Town Hall, so he's gonna put in the heroes to go and work in a different section of the base. They're usually at the Town Halls activated. And we don't like to put the heroes right in the Town Hall because they take a ton of damage on the approach. But we need the Town Hall activated for the next phase attack there anyways. And so I assume that he can avoid a lot of the damage by setting the blimp to go secure the Town Hall. So Overall, looking pretty solid there. The king was able to clear his compartment. The queen able to clear out the eagle artillery. Pops her ability to get the defensive world champion down. And now he'll start in the world champion for the far left side of the base there. But the blimp will go directly at the town hall. And he'll rush into the multi inferno, which is the last major splash damage defense on the base there. Also, with the race tower there, obviously very, very dangerous. But he gets a a little bit of spell support of his own there. And he's able to secure the town hall takedown with the skelly, or excuse me, with the Yeti bomb. Because the Skelly Jones was able to receive, remove the CC, so we didn't have to worry about a CC pull. But the World Champion does survive all the way through and gets the scatter shot down that she was able to reach there because the Queen was able to get the defensive World Champion out of the way. Now he's got 16 more balloons, one Lava Hound, skeleton spells, freezes, and he's sitting on four headhunters on the sidelines, and they're all going to come in now. A couple of. Brain traps couldn't really do anything to stop those headhunters because the way that he spread them out. Notice how when he put all the headhunters in, he split them into four separate stacks rather than just dumping them all in because then they could all get hit by a spring trap and they could all get launched off there and then the queen could have a maybe a very, very slight chance of being able to stop that from going through it. But I think he would have had it either way. I think he could have just swagged all the headhunters. He can swag, however, the extra invisibility spell and the free spell that is absolutely crushed. And we'll pass it over to Strut and see what they got for their opening attack. Returning fire will be Rigo Torres. Rigo Torres just got his base absolutely deleted. And now he will return fire with a queen charge into hog rider attack. Interesting approach here. Queen charge on one side, flame flinger on the other. And it looks like he's going to push the queen towards the town hall. Now the question is, can he get her to actually go inside? Can he get her into the town hall compartment? He doesn't have any recall spells, so he needs to get this right on the first try. But he will go ahead and make the queen move forward and will face the defensive king here shortly. But he's not going to go inside of the base there initially. It looks like he's going to have to wrap all the way around the bottom of this compartment and enter in down by the flame fling. That's my guess. And if he does go down there, he could also put the king in to go get the defensive queen down. So we have that all work together. I like the hog going to test for traps ahead of the flame flinger. Path here, but we'll definitely be keeping an eye on these multi infernos here, especially while the rage tower is active. Being under a lot of damage there. The Rage Tower boosts the damage on the defensive Warden, and that Warden hits about twice as hard as an Expo, so you don't want him striking you for very long before you deal with him, because look how much damage he's doing. Another freeze invested into the defensive Warden and the Queen. Oh, Queen, you're a smart Queen. She's a good Queen. She is going to step directly in and go to the multi in front of the target of healers, First, instead of going to the Rage Tower first, and now steps in, will secure the Town Hall takedown, and he set it up very, very nicely, but he still has a lot of base left. We'll see how much further he can keep on moving, because he's starting to run low on time. Did not go into the bottom side, scatter shot and defensive queen there with his king, instead goes with the king at the top of the base there, and will go after the defensive row champion in the scatter shot instead. The queen engages the defensive CC now. It's like a couple of super minions are out of there, and... Freeze them up as well. One freeze left here. He's used a lot of freezes here to work with this queen. 
Trying to keep her alive. Her ability's already been used. Queen's threatened. And she's gone. But the healers will transfer over to the right side of the base there. And they're going to get sniped off there. They're not going to survive. So he needs to get it done with the hogs now. Uh, as we will see. Paddolino potentially hold here. Gonna be close. It's gonna be close here. He's got a lot of force moving. RC ability still intact. One more freeze. One more invisibility. Freeze into the expo. While the rage tower is active, that keeps the world champion alive, but he loses some hogs to the multi inferno. The last of his hogs deploy. Oh no, he's got more hogs. More hogs coming in from the back side of the base there. Get that cleanup moving. Gotta move fast. 15 seconds, 15 seconds. He's got the wizards engaged in storages up top. RC going south. Ability still intact. He can hit a lot of the raining buildings there with the RC ability. He needs to hit the storages. Every building is engaged. Pop that ability. Take it. One more shot. He's got it. Rio Torres with the triple for Strahd. A close finish. But we're tied up to start this war. Bring it back down. Bring it back down. Padalino now live for class champs and we'll see if we can have another exchange like that because that is That's a very very nice way to start off a semifinals match Well, let's see what he can do here. Flameflinger will be pushing towards the Scattershot up on the top side the queen needs to go south there. She is okay. Good. Good. Good We'll go into the eagle artillery king. Okay king. Oh, oh that's an interesting approach there. Oh wait <laughs> In my head, I was thinking it was a queen charge. Now, now I realize that it is a zap into Sui Lalo. So he does, he never really wanted the queen to go separated from the king like I was thinking in my head. But he will get that queen to get the expo down, pop her ability, and find a couple of Teslas. So that ability not going to go to waste there. Still get a handful of defenses down, but the headhunters are... Going. Are they going after the world champion? I think they were going after the king there for a second. So the world champion is able to pick off a couple of them as they passed and ends up surviving their ability attack. A skeleton spell will come down for the defensive world champion. His own headhunters cross through and lock onto her, but he's going to struggle to get the scatter shot down. He'll be stuck on the hound. Okay, okay. scatter shot defends the headhunters and the defensive world champion stays standing. And that's a little bit troublesome right now. He did get the scatter shot down. And so it actually went backwards from what I expected it to. But he puts in another headhunter and he does go ahead and lock down the defensive world champion. He does take her out. Lalo pushes through the town hall. He has one more headhunter. He needs to be patient on this one here. He's going to lose some blues there to the defensive queen while he's waiting. But this patience may pay off here or may not. He loses a lot at the town hall, but he gets the expo down. He's got cannon over here. He needs to put the flame flinger from the... Or excuse me. He needs to put the headhunter from the right side after the flame flinger troops deploy wait for the distraction king on the outside of the base there releases a whole bunch of barbarians there's his opportunity now send it send it send it from the right from the right where is it oh it's right there it's the king i see it i see it headhunter locks on defensive queen gets poisoned she goes down okay he's still got a chance still moving still moving he's gonna get back to the storage at the bottom base here I minion's mean, doing some very very good work here but the war the Warden on air is probably what will carry this. A couple of traps are going off. Oh, no, no, no. Don't go over there. No, everybody go. Everybody. Okay. Warden, follow the super minions targeting. Do not follow the king's targeting. More grass skeletons. You got to be kidding me. Come on. Get to the storage. 10 seconds crossing through. Warden, stop following the king. Red air pumps. Warden switches targets. Oh, baby. Triple! Badalino gets it done! And we have a third triple in a row. <laughs> Imagine on that attack if one of those super minions hit a black air bomb. Then he would have reduced the damage into that final storage. And he probably wouldn't have had enough super minions to direct the warden's targeting. And so he probably would have continued to follow the key. That was incredibly close, and this whole war has been so far, but Dark Star will now send it for Strunt. A couple of Tesses pop in there. Lightning used to take out the Expo and the Multi Inferno. And that is a single Inferno there. So it's gonna charge up and burn up this Ice Golem very, very quickly. Now goes to the King. He may need to burn a freeze on that. He does. Okay, freeze up the defensive king as well. Good call. Headhunter down to get him through the defensive king a little bit faster. The king will step through and take it out. And the log launcher will run down the multi-inferno. How far does the 
get here, though? How far can he go with this queen? Keep the queen inside of the base there would be good. I think it would be worth, like, two, three blues to go out to the arch tower on the outside of the base there if it gets... If it causes any pathing problems, but it doesn't seem to be. So, he's just skirted the range of it. Doesn't need to do anything drastic here. Doesn't need to waste any resources there. And he will have the pathing work out for him. The log launcher still throwing logs. He's got a rage here, but I feel like he wants to save the rage for the talent takedown. And he will just let the queen and the yetis coast a little bit further there into the defensive queen. With the yetis providing the extra distraction while they take the scatter shot down. The queen will reach over the wall there and take out the defensive queen. Headhunters will support as well. And then also, at the same time, clears the way for the royal champion to pass through with the lalo. He's got the rage. He's got the freeze. And the town hall will be activated soon on percentage. So... Taking some damage on the approach here, but just moving nice and slow and steady. Not too much damage here. Manageable. There's his rage. There's the ward ability. He also passes the headhunters through and the hound. The hound crosses through, soaks up all the black air bombs. The headhunters cross through, lock on the defensive road champion, and do not take her down. Skeleton spell still active in the area, and his road champion stays alive under the lalo. Taking some damage there. Did have to freeze the model there to keep her protected, but into the back end here. Gets the final shot of the defensive world champion. Into the scatter shot. Gets the stun, and the stun disables the strongest defense left on the base. Diggy and the world champion get a sweep all the way through from the start to the finish, and they will lock in another triple for a strut. And ladies and gentlemen, guys, you got to hand it to him. This is a very, very exciting war here so far. All triples across the board here. And we're back to tie as we approach the midpoint of the war. Let's keep this rolling. Leo, live for Class Champs. Is anybody going to make a mistake here and slip up in this war? But remember, they are playing in a best of two semifinals. So the score of this war will add to the score of a second war, and the combined total will decide who ends up moving to the grand finals. So, gotta stay consistent. You gotta play the long game. And you need to give your team any chance that you can. This is a queen charge recall of Rider. Bane just gets the funnel to move off to the right side of the base here, but it is a symmetrical base, so not exactly. It's like mostly symmetrical the only thing that's not is this core with these multis the rest of his team is mostly symmetrical here a weird a weird shape right there but the queen just clears the way here and will fight the cc and he's gonna push the flame flinger into the artillery and also pick up the bomb towers here but he needs to get this expo out of the way that'll be his number one target and the cc clear can't extract her out of there until all of those are dealt with and the flame flinger can move on in safety but the queen can't go to ability either. You can't let the queen go to ability when she's guarding and holding the tanking for the other defenses there because he needs to make sure that he doesn't transfer the expo over to the flame fleeter. So, also just having your ability stay intact there for a more dangerous core of the base there is going to be very, very important because if he's using the siege machine now and the queen is now just starting to move in from the right side of the base. After the recall, the hogs are probably just going to be in charge of taking out, like, the the scatter shot and the defenses around here with the queen. Which means I would imagine that his king and queen still need to finish off all the way in to the town hall takedown. He's kind of playing with fire on this one here. Kind of playing risky. Giant bomb hits his... Flame Flinger up top, and that's going to reduce some of his value, but it's still got most of his value already, so there's that releases. He needs to get the hogs moving. He's down to one minute remaining. Guys, this needs to be a very, very, very fast hog attack. Here comes the king. Here comes the hogs. Super hogs release from the Flame Flinger and go to the multi. They will directly target it, and the, it's not able to do a lot of damage there before the Rage Tower activates the queen. Get away from the monolith. Get away from there. Okay. The monolith is still going to target back onto her. No, it goes to the hog rider. So, queen steps into the town hall. Will take it down. And now, the last quarter here. 30 seconds to go. They're really, really cutting these clocks close. More hogs over the right side to pick up a test of the pop over there. And they go directly into the monolith. 
20 seconds. He's got the cleanup working all around. RC ability still intact. It's gonna come down to another one where the RC ability might have to take the swing and clear out the last of the trash. 10 seconds pop the RC and it can only hit one target. Five seconds and he's got it. Leo with another triple for Clash Jams and they'll put the pressure back over to Strut. What are the chances that we can keep these triples rolling? This is absolutely insane. We've seen this many triples in a row so far. Both of these teams are playing on a completely different level from what we've seen recently. And we will see what Philip can do. Philip diving in with a Queen Charge Recall Super Dragon attack. Now, if he's trying to push in on the defensive queen and the scatter shot. And he, okay, I, oh, I see what he's doing here. He's trying to get the queen to go pick up the eagle artillery. He may need to invest a rage into that. Or his ability goes invisible. That works, that works. Go invisible, just give the queen just enough time to hopefully trigger that rage tower too. If she can trigger that rage tower and then get out of there. Perfect. <laughs> Philip, that was, that was picture perfect right there. But now the queen will redeploy the bottom of the ace there, go out to the other air defense, get the funnel set, and he can shoot in with the sweepers kind of leaning towards the eagle artillery side of the base, he might be able to sneak in behind them and not receive very much knockback. I like this positioning. Slam are gonna go with the super dragons, reinforcing them and probably carry an additional super dragon to dump into the core of the base there and try to get some of those key targets down. But the water ability protects and the rage, the only rage that the dragons will most likely receive. They, I guess they could get another one if he needs one for the defensive world champion to the backside of the base there if he can get there but the slammer opens up queen continues her path down south there she takes up one of the rages that he has left there and pops her ability but she's going to need the extra support there for the tile takedown and he has a lava hound heading her way so be very very careful but nice if he could have destroyed the cc before something ended up pulling the cc i don't even know what pulled it i have no idea what could have pulled it maybe it was a headhunter maybe that's what wandered into the area there but either way, the Queen will power through it, and the Race Tower has faded. Warden. A little bit of resistance up top there. The Beast will tank the air defense up there for just a moment. But the Queen is going to be able to secure the talent takedown. Lots of base left here. World Champion still on standby. Need to get the defensive World Champion under control here. This might be the first slip up of the war, guys. It's feeling like it's kind of running out of steam here. He's got 38 seconds, and there's a lot of base left here, and I don't think he really has the tools to be able to get through the last of the defenses. So he'll deploy the World Champion up at the top of the base there and clear up as much of the trash that he can get, but he doesn't really have a lot of claim to follow the World Champion either, so he'll leave up a lot of percentage up there of trash that is cleared of defenses guarding it. He'll pop that RC ability, and he'll get this one into the 80s. But it'll be the first slip up of the war. And for the first time this war, we have a lead established and it's in the favor of Clash Champs by 15 buildings and a star. Lead is now established. We'll see if they can hang on to it. Dark Star on defense, Lubzera going in with a Skelly Donut into Lalo. Going after two ground expos and the CC using all skeleton spells. There are no bats. If you can... Position your invisibility right. You'll notice that some people use all skeleton spells and don't always mix the bat spells in. And honestly, the deployment of the spells is a lot easier. And so if you can get it done like that and you don't have to worry about defensive heroes in the area potentially attacking the skeletons and drawing them off of the target, like we have seen cause some misses for skeletons, then you can do that because the, the Requirement of the bat spell and the skeleton spell means that you have to switch to a different spell in the middle of a very very difficult and Highly accuracy required portion of the attack and if you're switching around spells You're just potentially opening yourself up to mistakes And that's why some players will opt to go with pure skeleton spells there when there is an option That doesn't require you to go with bats there to avoid distraction so like loop able to clear out the entire right side of the base there the queen's still moving gonna pick up that eagle artillery there without too much problems the world champion unfortunately didn't get covered the board by the board ability but 
So she get that multi inferno down. Looks like she got her ability there to support there, and she will get it. The queen will pick up the sweeper, but the limp is able to go in, and because the town hall was not guarded by active CC troops there, he can run with the Yeti bomb to take the town hall down. No, have to go with a full air CC. Advantage of the skelly donut, not distracting your heroes, and not forcing you into a full air CC for that blimp drop, which definitely has a lot more power and a lot more consistency on securing the tall takedown. I think he's got it completely under control here, though. A couple freezes. You can swag those, toss them in the middle of the face there. And guys, just because Thrut is making that first mistake of the war, it doesn't mean Class Chance has to match it. They're going for a perfect war here if they can hold out for just one more, but still, there's a lot of war left here. It is two matches with the score added together. So even if they do end up with a perfect war, Strut is still far from out of this. All right, Mask. This is the chance. Let's see if Strut can swing this war back. Nice Coco Loon catches a double black air bomb. And he'll set another one. Not satisfied that that is all the traps in the area there. And we'll hunt for more. Mask has had a couple of time fails the last few times we've seen Strut play. Don't want to see that again. Loses the Queen ability, though, right out of the gate there, fighting the defensive king. A little bit of a problem here. Queen going to stay to the outside of the base, though, and we'll have a recall. He could recall the Queen and then have her push into the multi-inferno and then go to the town hall. But how far does he want to go here with the Queen before he pulls her out? go. Does engage the defensive world champion. Does go where I expected her to go. Got a Yeti up top there to distract the mortar. Mortar under control there. The Yeti will also pick up the archer tower there and push this flame flinger quicker into the scatter shot. But at the same time, while the queen was working along that far right side to set the funnel for herself, the flame flinger has been pushing through and will get this queen to take the turn into the base. Perfect. Perfect timing there. But a minute and 30 seconds elapsed. Flame Flinger gonna pick up the scatter shot there. I'd like to see the king go when he get the defensive road champion down south. Be a really good spot for him to go get some good value. He's only got nine super hog riders here. Like, I don't have a huge amount of hog riders to work with, but does freeze the town hall because his healers are getting targeted there. Has to freeze it again. Mass Cafe to dump a lot of additional resources and more resources spent on the Queen are less than he'll have available for the Hogs. And he is struggling a bit there, but he goes invisible one more time. The invisibility does not cover the healers and all the healers go down. That's a big mistake there. And here comes his offensive CC troops there. Super minions pop out of the flame flinger while the Hogs push to the bottom of the base. The King is the first to deploy down there. He, oh, wait, wait, no, the King was not deployed down there. That was the... The Royal Champion and the Warden, the King deploys to the far left side of the base there, and the Queen does ultimately go down at the Monolith because she didn't have the healers to support. Definitely the path better there with the healers, and it's just the difficulty of using the recall spell because they recall redeploy stacked with the Queen rather than at more optimal angles, so you have to really plan that out there. and. This one is not looking so hot here. He's slowly running out of time. 15 seconds together, whatever percentage you can. And guys, this is going to put Strut at 10 stars, potentially 13 to end the war. They can clutch triple in the last one. But if they don't want to go into war number two with a large deficit, then they need to pick up a defense. They need to stop Selenio. And let's remind you that in the previous wars, Class Champs has a lot of big names under the belt there. They took down Navi, they took out Badzinger, and now they have an opportunity to take down Strut here. And then you can see the other half of our bracket with Tribe Gaming and Imperium Titans that is still yet to play. That plays on Wednesday. And this could go the complete opposite direction. This could go to a perfect war into Class Champs' favor. And then if they get a defense themselves, they could potentially go into war number two with a three-star advantage. So we'll see if the base building from Strut is prepared to receive this attack here. But it looks like he's just gonna have the queen move along the outside of the base here. Now, I don't like that pathing very much there. Would've been nice if she would've stepped up more early, but he'll lose a healer to a black air bomb, gets a couple of down, finds another black air bomb. Any additional ones? Oh, okay, just... Just one. 
that he's able to save, but this is what I talked about with the pathing. I was a little bit concerned. But what is this queen doing? <laughs> you know what? He might be able to work with that. <laughs> what? Why was the queen attacking that wall? There goes another helical black air bomb. So Lino might be walking into a bait here, and that can swing the war. Come on, hold it together. Hold it together. Don't go down. I lose too much here before we reach that town hall. Flameflinger is getting struck by the mortar on the outside, and that's not just a regular mortar, that's a multi mortar. And this is a bigger problem. The Flameflinger opens the walls and gives the queen an alternate path. He has an invisibility. Does he need it? Does he need it? Oh, I don't know where she's gonna go. Where's she gonna go? Where's she gonna go? Where's she gonna go? Queen, no! Going north! He's going right into. Oh, no, 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 no. He doesn't have a jump. He doesn't have any wall breakers. He already deployed his king up top there. He makes the queen invisible. Selenio! Oh no! What he would have had fix everything here is that the queen would have stepped forward right away instead of going along the outside trash and then stepping forward at a suboptimal angle because now he's keeping this queen charge alive. He's keeping it moving, but he will need to lalo through the town hall. He has to gather percentage to get the town hall activated. He's there right now. He'll start to charge at the town hall. He has two rages. He needs to rage probably both of the approach and onto the town hall takedown, but he decides to save one of the rages there. He uses the haste on his initial entry. And there's the ward ability. Already used the freeze. There's the rage. Red air bombs going off. Tornado going off. Lots of damage right there. They'll come out of it and they will strike the town hall and take it down. But guys, this is leaving a lot of percentage. They have enough to win war number one. But obviously, this is not going through. So Strut has a chance to level the score a little bit and give themselves the best chance possible to swing it back in War 2. 87% on this attack is going to be right in line with the misses out of Strut. Pause it here for a second. So when the Queen entered in, let me see where he dropped her. Trying to think of how we could have mapped this out better. It was difficult. So he started here. And so what he needs is like a little bit of a funnel here, maybe a little bit of a funnel here, and they get the queen to step up and hit the mortar. If she steps up and hugs the walls, then she goes she goes to the left, but because she went to the trash and then circled back, she had an option to reach over the wall, and it pushed her north, and then she attacked that wall. Very, very unpredictable pathing for the queen. Very strong base building for a strut to really mess with the queen's AI like that. That was actually very difficult to push a queen from that angle. And did end up burn him. So that's pretty wild. But now Ast is live and we'll see what he can do. He will be setting in a, wait, what is this? He's got super archer blimp, super minion blimp, super minion blimp. He will drop in the super minion blimp and will try to go after the multi infernos, but he close up the super minions a little bit more forward still catches them inside the invisibility and he hit some red air bombs. Oh no! Red air bombs! Stop the town hall takedown! Uh oh. Uh oh. Drama. <laughs> town hall getting repaired. He also missed the multi infernal side of the base there. This is a bad, bad sign for ass right now. I have to find a way to recover that. But he's gonna push the Electric Titans in from the right and go to the scatter shot. He has one jump spell to cross through the base here. And that town hall is repairing fully. He's how do you get it down right now? He's gotta get the okay, he's got the jump. He probably intended for the jump to be originally over this this uh battle builder right there that has dropped. And so he wouldn't have to go over to the town hall compartment. But with the town hall still standing. He has to make a sacrifice, and he needs to make sure that he goes in there and takes it down. Well, has the ward ability active, but he can pop. Okay, pops it now. The Titans make their final approach. The town Hall has fully recovered now. Titans will snipe the Town Hall off. He'll freeze up the model to protect his queen as he comes out of the ward ability. And the queen's still doing good work here. There's still a chance he can triple this, guys. 
Kind of about just, yeah, to engage the defensive queen. A couple of red air bombs are going off, but a lot of the red air bombs are already cleared by the super minions, so I don't think the healers will have enough red air bombs left in this base here that could potentially take him out, but the town hall poison might be able to do that, but poison fades, and his road champion still working down south will potentially get the scatter shot down. I'll take it, road champion, take it. Oh, okay, that's the problem. The queen steps through. Queen will finish it. Hold up. Hold up. He's got a chance here. 50 seconds. 50 seconds. Guys, what are we going to do here? What are we going to do? A little bit concerned about the very top corner of the base there. I'm concerned about time. Unicorn topping off the queen. Electro Titans and Warden continue to make their way forward there with the Grand Warden assisting. Anything that he shouldn't be able to outheal. Queen did go down, down south though. Okay, he definitely. He definitely would have tripled this if he would have got the super minion value off of the drop. I have no doubt of that. But the base was trapped up. And they're able to stop it. And that means we go into war number two with a two star advantage into class champ's favor and a small amount of percentage as well. I think everybody here is familiar with the curse of the strut hat. We feel like we've broken that curse. I don't think that curse is gonna affect them anymore. So I think what we need to do is establish a new curse. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, activate for the first time on the channel, the curse of the class champs hat. War 2 is underway! Strut versus Class Champs with advantage by two stars and 22 buildings to start off this war into Class Champs' favor. Let's see what happens here. Let's see if we can activate the Class Champs' hat curse. That's the goal here. That's the, we're gonna we're gonna see if we can jinx them right out of a win. But they're going to need a very, very, very big swing of this war here. But then again, I mean, it happened once. It could just as easily happen again. As starts us off here with a zap into Electro Titan smash attack. He does have this town hall relatively close to the edge of the base there. But there's a ground expo that's guarding it. He used the lightning to take out the other expo along with the spell tower. And so the flame flinger is going to... Go to the scatter shot first. Huh. Okay. This is gonna be weird path in here. I don't know if this flame flinger can actually lock on and secure the town hall takedown without the expo targeting it, but because it was able to go north for a little bit and go up and pick up the scatter shot, very, very interesting play there because he's also guarding his flank. Does get a healer taken out by a black gear bomb, but the balloons are passing up right there and there's the ward ability. He was forced to auto ability there as the warden was taking some extra damage there. And the warden is very close to going down. As soon as you come out of this ward ability, he's going to go down. So the multi inferno just ends up picking him off. A little unfortunate there. But the flame flinger is indeed. Oh, the Tesla! Tesla drops out of the ground and ass might end up with a one star. Oh, no, no. Okay, maybe this hat is not very cursed. That's a bad side. That's a very, very bad side right here because the King and the Expo are still guarding the Town Hall. Did he already use his Road Champion? No, he has not deployed his Road Champion yet. He will have to emergency deploy her. No! Why? Why are we on? Oh, no! Asked! Why are we put? Oh, uh, why? Did he did he think that the road champion would have a chance to take the towel down? I thought she could go in there and pick up the backup, but maybe... Maybe he was... Maybe that's the right call. Maybe that's the right call. I don't think the road champion would have been able to make it past the king and actually be able to secure the towel takedown. Maybe this is just a play for more percentage and he would have missed it either way. That's probably the right call. I, I don't like it one bit. I don't like it one bit, but he did make the right decision there. The Tesla burned him hard. Tesla defends the town hall and it's a one star for a strut when they're already playing heavily behind. 
I I have a I have a feeling that we not only don't have a curse on this class champs hat, but we might actually have it boosting them. So I think we need to change it up here. We need to channel our superstition. We need to believe that the strut hat has had its curse lifted and maybe we can channel some of that good luck in the opposite direction and maybe we can see Strut make the comeback here. But right now it's looking a little bit grim, but there's still a long war ahead of them to try to find a way back. So I need to get these Inferno Dragon stopped as he goes in completely opposite of the town hall. And he does have a skeleton spell on both flanks there. The queen working one flank, the king working the other. He gets the defensive queen down on one side, the defensive world champion down on the other, and the queen does step in and will take the scatter shot down. The elder spell is just blank in the base here, but he's got four freezes for the town hall area. Wow, this is actually moving very smooth. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to do everything I can here to try to impact the war, but I don't think there's anything that is going to stop these Inferno Dragons from clearing out the rest of the base here. They will take a lot of damage at the Town Hall, but if this King goes down, it's over. The World Champion will not be able to be stopped there on the backside, but the King wandering there. Get pulled forward there by the Unicorn, and he still stays standing. Okay, the World Champion making her way past. Can he stop her? Gordon assisting. Ground Skellies freezes. Ground Skellies, Ground Skellies, Ground Skellies, Ground Skellies, Ground Skellies. Pop to RC ability. Warden. Okay! Hold up! Hold up! <laughs> the Road Champion goes down! The King holds the line! And this Warden! And I guess the Frosty will keep on moving. They have a lot of base left here. They move very, very slow. And this area of the base has not been cleared of traps in the air. So as soon as this warden steps up, I feel like he's done, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm a little bit nervous. He still has the Phoenix though. Maybe the Phoenix could carry him through still regardless. I'm not sure. But the Frosty moves over. If there's a trap that needs to stop, this, he needs to stop it like right now. There it is! Gatches the warden! Needs another one for the Phoenix. Needs another one for the Phoenix. Find a trap. Find a trap. Find the defense. Gotta stop this Phoenix. 26 seconds. Oh, he's got so much weight. What is he missing? Oh! <laughs> oh my god. You can't make this up. <laughs> he misses the army camp at the top of the base. And he's not going to have the time to go back for it. Ladies and gentlemen. They were granted some luck, and boy, did they need it. But they have a long way to make up for in this war. But that is just step one. This hat needs to work overtime now. The curse is broken. Here we go, guys. Philip is in for the next attack for Strunch. That leaves some life in this war for them. We witness a comeback here. It would be miraculous. It would have to be miraculous. Only divine intervention is going to get Strut into the grand finals at this point here, but we're doing our best here to channel it. We're working on it. We're working on it. Philip able to take out the Eagle Artillery area of the base there. Pick up the second multi or no, not quite, not quite, not quite. He's not gonna get it. They got the other one. Still solid value. And we will begin with the Electro Titans. Electro Titan will quickly burn through the defensive CC troops there and go finish off the Super Minion. No threat there with Grand is also immediately getting burned up there by the Electro Titans. Not really a problem for them. Long way to go though. Very, very, very large check to the base there remaining. Two freezes, one jump spell to get them all the way through. Biggest thing I'm oh, more CC troops. I didn't realize that he didn't get a full CC per pull earlier, but he's going to freeze up the monolith and picks up the super minions with it. Vertically still on standby. King working on the outside of the base there. Those barbarians swinging wide and giving him some good cover out there. Like to see all those point defenses working on barbarians and not striking the king directly. Always a good thing. Don't last forever though. 
Bloom goes out there to support. The King just doing his thing out there, but no ability to protect him. He's just gonna coast, but the more he can get out there, the better off he'll be. He does need to get the Defensive Road Champion out of control on the side of the base there. That's gonna be the biggest obstacle on the back end. If he can get her out of the way, then he can slip his Road Champion through. But he does have an Ice Golem. He has Giants, he's got Headhunters, and I feel like he has all of those set aside to support the Road Champion to go in after her. But he loses all the healers. Ice Golem deploys, Road Champion goes in. Ice Golem will be the first to pull aggro. And the Headhunters will assist getting the defensive Road Champion down. Does the trick there. Down comes the Giant, down comes Wizards. Queen still surviving now, it's the base here. Come on, Philip, come on, Philip, we believe. Got a lot of time to work with here, but the Road Champion gets stalled up by Ground Skellies. Okay, it's gonna slow him up a little bit here for the Queen. Trying to hang on, she lost her Unicorn, so she goes down. The Titans are low HP. Both of them are low HP. They're not gonna last very long up there, so he can't get distracted on the defensive King. He does get the scatter shot down. The Road Champion, okay! The Electro Titan's gonna survive! Philip! Get that wizard to survive on the outside. RC gonna turn north and he's got it! Strut! Come on, keep this rolling! Pick up a defense! Get back in this! Let's go! Let's dive in and let's see if they can pick up the defense and maybe recover this war. Another Inferno Dragon attack for Class Champs. Get to defend that last one by a stroke of luck. Let's see if that can happen again. Defensive King. Gonna wander away from this Inferno Dragon, resetting its beam. Always the difficulty of going through the Defensive King, but he quickly gets him under control. The Super Minions were able to dish out enough damage there to make up for the Inferno Dragons. Kind of slipping up there, but coming behind the Sweepers. Skeleton Spell locking down the Monolith. The Poison Tower was already triggered. So it shouldn't be a problem as he makes his way forward. But there's a very, very heavy area up ahead. Rage Tower. A lot of big defenses all around it. But there's the Ward ability. Eagle Artillery Strikes are coming in now. And I think they're going to strike right after the Eagle Artillery. Nope. I was going to say the Ward ability is able to protect them. I thought it might strike after that. But they came a little bit faster than expected. He does lock onto the CC now. The Black Air Pops going off here. But this one in front of Dragon is locked onto it. Frees up the Rage Tower area. Stopping the bulk of the damage here. King and Queen still saying... Very, very healthy on the outside of the base there on the far left and looking pretty solid out there. And if they have everything cleared out of the core of the base so that they can't reach, then there's not a lot that'll be able to stop this. This is a very, very clean attack for Padalino right now. We're champion to poison the opposite side. A little bit of additional spell support here. Clean up working on the right side as well. Getting the clean up down early. Not gonna end up with a time fail again on this one. It's either gonna go through or he's going to be stopped, but I don't think it's going to be able to be stopped here, guys. This is a very, very bad sign for Strut. They really, really desperately needed a defense right here, but the Road Champion goes down. Okay, Queen's not going down. He has swag the rest of his spells there. Three swag spells, and he will put it very close to out of reach here for Strut. They're still going to need a miracle. No amount of jinx. Seems to be slowing down class champs today. They are dominating. Ruts on the ropes. Activate Miracle. Come on, Mask. Come on, Mask. We need you to perform here. We need Mask to pull off this triple, and they're going to need some major defenses. Three stars down. Three attacks to go for each team. Strut. Has a very, very uphill battle to go here. We'll see if Mask stage the comeback. We'll be sending in the Queen. The King and the World Champion all working together here. Going after, I guess if they take out the Expo. And then the CC is dealt with. Then he could put in a Flame Flinger to go in here and clear out the Eagle Artillery area. Where champion's got it under control though. The queen gonna be fighting off the defensive hound. And I like this Phoenix continue to work onto this archer tower over there. Keep on it. The uh, sweeper not gonna back a little bit there, but it does claim it. Good value out of the Phoenix right there. Pretty solid. Where champion goes all the way forward there, gets the monolith damaged up there, but not taken down. Still solid value out of the heroes here. And now, what we need to see. No, that's not the angle that I was thinking. 
I was thinking broadside the town hall, blimp with the rage and ward ability out of the gate. Okay, you know, <laughs> I was like, I saw all the bullets come to the right side and I was like, that's not the right approach here. No, he, this is the right approach. He was just doing something preemptive up on the top side and the, I need to go clear that area, but the blimp will travel through. He will land on the town hall. Yeti bomb will take it and the balloons hopefully will not go through the poison. They all split off there. A bunch go to the top air defense. You think that air defense down does take it and more balloons hit the right side. Okay, math looking good here. One haste. Wait, wait that queen still alive? All right, well, the queen wanted a little piece of the action there to close it out. He still got the haste. I think he just better use it and make sure that this goes through no matter what. But the warden is going to take that haste there before the balloons do. And the balloons will go in and warden will steal the final strike. Okay, the balloons are just for show. The warden doing the heavy lifting there but he gets the triple and now it gives Strut a chance but they desperately need defenses from here I'm trying to get in the head of class champs are they getting comfortable are they feeling like they have the win locked in are they gonna start getting a little bit complacent I don't know. I feel like some teams very well might. I think Strut is still fully capable of making the comeback here. And you can't let your guard down. So, Clash Champs. Gonna keep on charging forward here. But this attack right here. Leo sending in a Queen Charge. Super Barbarian. And that's a lot of them to make their way to the base there, but he does go ahead and drop out rocket balloons out of a log launcher. Able to take the Eagle Artillery and able to pick up the Multi Inferno. Leaves at the Expo though. Rage Expo doing a lot of damage to the Queen. The Queen steps forward under ability. Locks on the defensive Queen. Poisons down for the Super Minions and he'll take the Scatter Shot down. Okay, so far so good. Freeze up that Raged Up Expo and will try to sustain. But he did get good value out of that log launcher. The expo would have been the values looking for Queen goes down to a giant bomb. Oh, this is bad. This is a one star risk. He has no siege machine. All of his heroes are deployed. He doesn't have a backup to the town hall. His only path to take it is the super barbarians. Do they have the punch to take it. I don't even know what they do. He's got some rages. He's got freezes. Now pop the ward ability. Everybody's staying to the outside of the base. And that race tower will fade. He's just waiting for it. Being patient, being patient, being patient. Super Barbarian start in. He has to secure the town hall takedown. Or it will swing in his war. Come on, Leo. Come on, Leo. This entire tournament may rely on this town hall going down or not. He does get back to it. The king circles back. He does secure it. But he's gonna leave a lot of percentage on the board here, guys. Last chance with the miss. And for Strut, this is not. This could not have come at a better time. Oh my god, the drama in this war. The drama in this war is overwhelming. <laughs> he's gonna throw in the last of his blues over the right side, and he still is getting some solid percentage out of it, all things considered. But obviously, leaving a lot up for grabs here and giving strut the chance that they need nice try leo or passing it back to strut strut has recovered the war after the one star but they still need to recover the series after going into this from war one two stars behind the dark star Takes out the multi with the Dragon Rider out of the blimp from the right side. I was worried that he wasn't going to get it there, but he does pick it up there. And he was able to claim out the CC and the model. So the Skelly Donut was successful. Starting off this plan on the right foot. Headhunter comes down to get the King to take out the defensive King. Queen will pick up the air defense and force the King to stay into the Town Hall compartment. And that's a very good sign. The Giant is going to take the lead there for the Queen. And more giants are sprinkling in as he makes his approach into the defensive queen. King looking very, very good there. No potential distraction. Gonna go right in and secure the town hall. I have no doubt of that. But if he could just guarantee that by taking out that uh, battle build, or by not going to the battle builder there, 
go to the right and avoid the defensive queen. That'd be good. But the queen is distracted there right at the perfect time. The king does go that direction. So it's a very, very good thing that the queen was get, able to get there first and distract the defensive queen. Otherwise, the king may have ended up having her strike at him. And then he'd have to then try to chase her through the wall. And that could have been a disaster. But he is able to avoid it. Here we go. He's got the twin hog attack to follow it up here. The super hog riders take the lead to go down the gun to the base there all of them deployed into the core he, he only brings as many of them as he wants to go to the core and then the rest of them will cascade in from the sides giants deployed out in front of them just to give them a little bit of protection there on the flanks and the freezes will protect the main pack as he charges forward lots of hogs still alive world champion staying very very safe behind him queen is still working breaking the walls and she still wants a piece of the back side of this base here Rockstar is looking very, very clean. This is exactly what your team needed. He's got to get the scatter shot dealt with. He did get the defensive world champion out of the way there, but with this queen ability, I'm pretty sure that she'll be able to provide the back end support here to guarantee this world champion it goes the distance, pops her ability, takes the expo down. And ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I wouldn't believe it if we weren't witnessing it, but Strut has done what they need to do so far to stage the comeback. That's another triple. If they pick up another defense, then this entire series will come down to the final exchange. It all comes down to these final three attacks. Loop Zera. If Loop Zera or Selenio land a triple, against either of these bases they could put the war out of reach here away from strut strut desperately needs this hole skelly donut going to the defensive road champion all the skeletons are running off he's gonna leave the model though he got the cc down though he got the cc but he will not get the model only half value out of the skelly donut and that is going to make this a little bit more difficult, especially if that monolith ends up locking onto somebody important like his world champion. We keep it a very, very close eye on it as we make our way into the base there after the heroes do what they need to do down south. I'm not really concerned about them reaching the town hall. The monolith won't impact them. Unless he had a misplan. But the king gonna get followed by the queen to go into that compartment. Now the king will get targeted by the monolith, so maybe it is a problem. And he's gonna have this rage tower go off as well. We'll probably have to take it under Phoenix to actually be able to finish it off. But he throws a skeleton spell down on the side of the base there. Distracts something. I don't know why I put it there. Interesting position for the skeleton spell. But King does go to the town hall now. And Monolith walking on. Freeze the town hall. Pop the king ability. Town hall secured. But Expos would be valuable there as well. The king splits and might be able to take one of them. Maybe not. Queen takes the other one though. The king does tag that one out there. Queen ability. Is already used, so she does not get this other expo. Flame Flinger still chipping away here, but here comes the hogs into the other raised tower. The pushing through this eagle artillery area. Double bomb tower. Giant bombs are going off here, but by the time he gets to the bomb towers, the giant bombs are obviously out of the way there, but the the ward ability is gonna be triggered and gone. And oh ho ho! Hogs are getting wrecked! Oh my god, guys! This is happening! This is happening! Loop Zero with the miss! Oh, where does the percentage land here, though? Where does the percentage land? He's gonna have his CC troops over the right side of the base. There are a couple archers chipping away. He's losing whatever's left in the core there, trying to get what he can with this warden. The last remaining troops there still charging through, but the monolith will hold the line in the core of the base and so will that world champion and the scatter shot that was on the right side that did a ton of damage never even had a chance for the bomb tower to go off and stop everything up he'll get the percentage up into the 80s and i am a little bit concerned about strut's chances with percentage because they also came into this war with a not only two star deficit but 22 buildings behind and even though class champs has had some misses the percentages have been rather high so we're gonna visit that right now we'll see what a 92 sends them to and we'll see what the landscape looks like here as we go into the final exchange strut obviously will need a triple strut 
is ahead on percentage in this war. By, it looks like, three buildings. That means Strut has to triple. And then if Class Champs gets an 82 or higher on their last attack, then they're going to take the series. 19 building split. Into Class Champs' favor. One star up. And the final attacker to give Srut a chance to head to the Grand Finals is none other than the legend himself, Rigo Torrens. Using Rocket Blooms down south, able to pick up the air defense and pick up the Archer Tower. Using more Rocket Blooms over the left side, able to go after the other air defense, the other Archer Tower. Get the funnel set. Lightning wiped out the core. No sweepers stand on this base here. And four Super Dragons will begin their march into this base. Funnel Solid though, minions it away. We'll pop that ward ability and protect him into the Rage Tower area. Also protecting the blimp. The blimp will need to cross all the way through the base here and it will need to arrive and then secure the Town Hall. This is the hinge point of the attack here. This is the most important thing. Their whole season could rely on this blimp taking the Town Hall, freeze it up, red air bombs going off and Town Hall goes down safely. Still a lot of base left here, but the biggest part of the tactic, the riskiest part, is now behind him. Or Rocket Blues go to the, 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 what do you call it, the Inferno on the left side of the base. They're getting the Expos down. The Dragons are going into the CC, and will they, they will destroy it. No drama there. Okay, okay, everything's going smooth. Everything going exactly to plan here for Rigo. Still has that defensive king on the top side along with the defensive queen very very dangerous up ahead here but the dragons able to coast their way all the way into the expo on that right side taking a lot of the damage off of his heroes and the dragon even stays alive and will keep on moving keep an eye on that if that dragon gets another ground expo that'd be huge here he's got three more freezes more rocket balloons no headhunters on standby for the defensive queen but the dragon goes all the way through locked on to another ground expo saves the queen ability in the process and not only that but going to take out the internal buildings he'll throw down the rest of the rocket blues on the back side of the base here and now the final defenses and this super dragon will not be stopped and either will Riga Torres ladies and gentlemen is coming down to the final attacks Rut is staging the epic comeback and if they get the hold here, then they go to the Grand Finals. They have to stop Selenio. Selenio, his mark to beat, is 82%. All comes down to this. Months of play. Months of preparation. Base building. And nail-biting wars. And Selenio starts off this final attack with a successful Skelly Donut. Taking down the CC. Taking down the Multi-Inferno. And now, 82% is the mark to reach. Anything goes wrong here. They leave a lot of percentage on the board. The Heat keep his composure here. The king is looking to go south. Queen, uh, she's going north. I don't know if she stays north there or she, I kind of feel like he needs to send her to the town hall. She's kind of wandering north. No, she goes south. She takes the turn. It was invisible with her. The golem is running out there, but the defense of our champion pulls the queen north. Oh no. Expos forced the queen to ability. She'll get the scatter shot down. She'll get the more champion down, but the town hall stays standing. Maybe the slammer's in charge of it. Maybe the Slammer's in charge of it. He could put the Slammer there. There's only ground Expos. Because he tested the area for traps, he's going to go for it. Maybe that was applied the whole time. Maybe not. But the Slammer needs to secure the town takedown. He's patient. He's patient. He's patient. But time's ticking away here. Red air bomb's going off. Slammer making its way in. Town Hall activates. Freeze the Town Hall. Town Hall was not activated up until that point there. But looks like he's going to secure the town takedown. As soon as he realizes that it is not going to fail that takedown, he can start the hog safely, and he can try to get the last 30% that he needs here for his team. He's looking very, very good right now. 
But if they can change here, the moment it's notice here, we see lots of spring traps that can stop hogs here as they make their way forward. One pack splits away from the rest here on the right and gets sniped off ahead of the rest. And the rest of the pack here will have the ward ability protection. Headhunters cross through under the ward ability. Giant bombs are going off. Skeleton spells on the left side of the base there, distracting the scatter shot for a moment. Hogs stuck in the tornado trap. 62%, 63% climbing. RC ability still intact. He still has a couple more hogs on standby. Cleanup working up top here, looking good. But he still needs to get past the Expos and the raged up multi infernos. RC taking a lot of damage here. He's very close, but he's not there yet. We're a champion. Oh, she oh, she's down. She's down. She's down. He's not there yet. Come on. Three, four buildings, four buildings. Archer Tower is defending. Sneaky Gob is taking some. Wiz is down south. There's 70. There's 80. Oh, 81. 81. The Archer Tower is in a defendant. Hold up. He has to get this. He has to get this right here. 80. Oh, he got it. Oh, my God. 82%. He barely scratches it by with that last wizard. And it is a one building lead for this series. And class champs is advancing to the grand finals oh my god you cannot make that up all right this threat hat it definitely worked overtime to give them a chance to win this war they, it, i can't believe it turned out the way that it did both teams end at 25 stars 50 percent hit rate outstanding performance from both teams but the percentage lands one building in the favor of class champs in the end that was wild. So in the event that that wizard didn't take the buildings down, then average attack time across the two wars would have decided it. And it looks like after war number one, the average attack time was eight seconds in advantage for class champs. War number two's average attack time was six seconds into the advantage of strut. So actually, it would have had to have been two buildings less than it was to swing the war into Strut's favor.